Congress is returning tomorrow from its three-week recess with some pretty good news. Top congressional leaders have finally reached an agreement on the overall price tag of the next batch of government spending bills, marking a pretty major step toward averting a parcel shutdown. That's set to begin actually later this month. Our Jay O'Brien is up there on the Hill covering that for us. So let's talk about the details of the agreement, Jay. Yeah, and to understand this, you just got to think about the timeline here for a second. So remember, government funding was set to expire in the fall. We had all those concerns about a government shutdown, right? And then lawmakers at the 11th hour kicked the can down the road into the winter. And then we have this same conversation in the winter, right? And then lawmakers pass another short-term government funding measure, kicks the can down the road into now. Government funding expires for some federal agencies in 11 days from now. Those agencies are, for instance, the Department of Transportation, the Department of Veterans Affairs, the list goes on. Then other agencies, their funding expires in February. And so that's what causes this deal with the top Democrats in the Senate who control that chamber, led by Chuck Schumer, and the top Republicans in the House who control that chamber, led by Speaker of the House Mike Johnson. And the top line number is that it funds the federal government at about $1.6 trillion dollars all the way until next fiscal year in the fall. Now, the question becomes, will this get enough momentum here on Capitol Hill to actually pass in the House and in the Senate? We know that Republicans and Democrats in the Senate have signaled that this is something that they would support. Certainly, Democrats in the Senate brokered this deal. In the House, there are some conservatives in the House who have already said they're not going to back this measure. The House Freedom Caucus, the hardline group of House conservatives, called this a quote-unquote total failure. So the question now facing Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, is can he get enough Republicans in his party to support this? And does he have to eventually turn to Democrats to get this over the goal line, Kira, which it's looking like he'll probably have to do. So let's be realistic here then. Will this bill ever make it to the president's desk? It really hinges on how much Mike Johnson can get it done in the House of Representatives because all things look poised for this measure to pass in the Senate. And of course, if it passes in the Senate, in the House, remember, we avert a government shutdown. So you have to look at the House and see how Speaker Johnson is able to move within his own party here. It is almost certain at this hour that he'll probably have to turn to Democratic votes to get this over the goal line. The question becomes, are House Democrats open to this? And are there any kind of hang ups between Mike Johnson and House conservatives that may not push this into the place where it doesn't pass, but certainly delay this process in getting this bill onto the floor for a vote. Another question for you, House Republicans, they're moving forward in holding Hunter Biden in contempt of Congress still. Any movement there? Well, remember, this was that ongoing discussion that was in the later part of last year where uh, House Republicans in the House Oversight Committee, as part of their ongoing impeachment inquiry into President Biden, said that they wanted to interview Hunter Biden behind closed doors. Hunter Biden, you may remember, Kira, you and I were on the air together, comes out and gives a press conference on the steps of the Capitol in which he says, I'm not going to be interviewed behind closed doors. I will talk to the committee, but in an open hearing that the American people can see. So he essentially defied is that subpoena and this is now House Republicans saying because Biden defied that subpoena they are going to hold him in contempt of Congress. This is an action by the committee it eventually would have to be brought to a vote on the House floor and only then could this wind up in court like others who have defied congressional subpoenas in the past most notably in terms of the January 6th committee but certainly it is a step in the direction of House Republicans dragging Hunter Biden into court for what they say is defying their subpoena. Jay O'Brien up on the Hill for us. Jay, thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.